BD's ATV channel and YouTube channel, VK1 WIA National News, Wireless Weather and Radio Sport is next. From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Yes, it is the national news for week commencing March 13, 2022 and it is Graham VK4BB. This is by far the finest wooden shipwreck I have ever seen. It is upright, well proud of the seabed, intact and in brilliant state of preservation. Now we are talking here of the good ship Endurance, which was one of the ships Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton, Antarctic explorer, who led three British expeditions to the Antarctic sailed in. He was one of the principal figures of the period known as the heroic age of Antarctic exploration. Now, we have the chance, on the afternoon of May 7, 2022, to join in the AGM, the WIA AGM, and the virtual conference, being streamed from Hobart, an afternoon of brilliant presentations, all about different aspects of Antarctic history, adventure, research, and challenges. But, back to the endurance. The ship became trapped in pack ice and was slowly crushed before the shore parties could be landed. The crew escaped by camping on the sea ice until it disintegrated, then by launching the lifeboats to reach, ultimately, South Georgia Island, a stormy ocean voyage of 720 nautical miles, and became Shackleton's most famous exploit. After over a century, the wreck of the Endurance has been found, 3,008 metres below the surface of what Shackleton described as the worst portion of the worst sea in the world. It was discovered Saturday, March 5, the 100th anniversary of Shackleton's funeral, the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust said. The expedition that found her, led by British polar explorer John Shears, found the Endurance six kilometres from the position recorded by Endurance Captain Frank Worsley. Now, hopefully not another century to wait, but it does again give hope to finding MH370. Now, for those who remember pre-COVID times, the 2020 WIA AGM and conference was to be held in Hobart with the theme Antarctic Gateway. Well, spin forward two years and the virtual conference is being streamed from Hobart on the afternoon of May 7, 2022. It consists of an afternoon of brilliant presentations all about different aspects of Antarctic history, adventure research and challenges. With more... Peter Klee, Secretary of Your WIA. Thank you, Graham, and uh, greetings, listeners. This is WIA Director Peter VK8ZZ. Firstly, my thoughts go out to those members affected by the flooding on the East Coast. Stay safe. I'm just in the process of sending out requests for reports from our WIA committees for this year's AGM. The committee chair and secretary should return these reports to me as soon as possible. If you don't get an email request from me, then please make contact with with me at secretary at wia.org.au. These reports will be discussed in the open forum at this year's AGM. Whilst on the matter of the AGM, it will be a virtual event conducted on Saturday the 7th of May 2022. The virtual AGM and convention are being organised by both the staff and board of the WIA preparing the AGM itself and members of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania, REST, who are organising the virtual convention. REST accepted the opportunity to hold this event after the forced COVID failure of 2020 and 2021. More information in the next few broadcasts. The board are seeking nominations for WIA awards. Award nominations must be in the prescribed form, which is available on the WIA website and submitted to the WIA well ahead of the AGM. WIA club insurance notices went out in the mail to clubs on the 23rd of February. Please ensure you get your insurance details in before the 11th of March, as late declaration forms will not be accepted. The Spectrum Strategy Committee are currently looking at the ACMA report on progress of the ACMA five-year Spectrum Outlook and preparing submissions for the next review. They are also looking at issues relating to the proposed loss of bandwidth in the 3 gigahertz band. The committee will provide a report and recommendation to the board to take to the ACMA. While the ACMA and the WIA meet regularly to discuss changes to the amateur service. The last meeting with ACMA was in late January with a proposed follow-up meeting again in the next few weeks. 
The WIA ticketing system is currently experiencing some technical issues and our office have been unable to address the, all of the issues. Uh, the WIA apologises for this and we will get the system up and running as soon as possible. 7-3, this has been WIA Director and Secretary Peter, VK8ZZ. This is Editor-in-Chief of Amateur Radio Magazine, Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH. Last Monday, the files for Issue 2 were uploaded to the printer's server in Bairnsdale, Victoria. The issue's cover was printed the week before. This is done because the cover is printed on heavier, glossier paper, requiring a different printing method. Late last year, our printer went to some lengths to secure the necessary paper stock at a price within our means. Incidentally, that paper comes from Tasmania. VK7, we're sending that paper back to you, covered in colour photos, exciting words and glossy advertising. Once the ink dried from printing the guts of AR Mag, and with the cover wrapped around and all stitched together with a couple of staples, piles of magazines on shrink-wrapped pallets were ferried on trucks from Bairnsdale to the Mailing House and the news agency distributor, both in Melbourne. So, I anticipate that issue two will be in your hands, and possibly news agencies, this coming week. The theme for the issue is Test and Measurement. Andy Keir, VK2 Alpha Alpha Kilo, VK2 AAK, provides an earthy explication of the types of tools you might want or need in order to keep your ham shack humming or to engage in electronic endeavours of the do-it-yourself kind. Newcomer's Notebook weighs in with some practical help on figuring out resistor shunts and multipliers without fears or tears so you can make panel meters show volts or amps different from their original specifications. Ohm's Law in Practice, without complex mathematics. Thank you, Jules Perrin, VK3, Juliet Fox Papa. We review an economy multifunction digital multimeter featuring true RMS AC measurement, non-contact live wire detection, and a 10 meg frequency counter. And the indefatigable Lou De Stefano, VK3 Alpha Quebec Zulu, launches a wide-range RF power meter project. And for something completely different, Eric Heinzler, VK5 Hotel Sierra Echo, asks the question, can esoteric mathematics help us in fox hunting? He shows us how to go hunt down hidden transmitters with that famous French mathematician, Joseph Fourier. For some light entertainment in these pandemic-impaired times, Arthur Day, VK2 Baker Baker, India, regards us with the COVID chronicles about the things he discovered during a lockdown last year that recalled a misspent youth hanging out in the famous West Lakes Radio Club at Taralba, near Newcastle, New South Wales. To bring on gasps of no and really, you just have to read our major feature on the unsung pioneers of TV technology in Australia by WIA historian Peter Wolfenden, VK3 Romeo Victor. Peter deals some astonishing activities before the start of broadcast television in the 1940s and 50s, when radio amateurs trumped the broadcasters. Amateur Radio Magazine, Volume 90, Issue Number 2 for 2022, serving Australian radio amateurs since 1933. This has been AR Magazine Editor-in-Chief Roger Harrison, VK 2ZRH, for VK1 WIA News. Now, international news with Jason, VK2 LAW. Hello. Commencing each week as we do from Region 1, March 2, 2022, the N-Sept Novice and F-Sept Herrick radio exams were held in Holland. Just a day later, the Radio Exams Foundation announced the preliminary exam results. For the N exam, the pass rate was 70%, while for the F exam, 65% of the candidates passed. A total number of exam candidates was 60. The novice exam is 75 minutes and the paper comprises 40 questions. Each question has three answers, A to C to choose from, and the pass mark is 29. The full exam lasts 105 minutes and the paper comprises of 50 questions each with four answers A to D to choose from and the pass mark is 35. Still on an educational theme, online training is growing in popularity in Spain through the Jitsi Meet platform. These tutorials are open, so any party who is preparing to obtain an administrative authorization from Amateur Radio can attend. 
Spain's Herrick exam for the full licence comprises of 30 questions on rules and regulations and 30 on technical theory. The pass mark is 50% for each. And don't forget that our regulator, ACMA, has announced it will update the Advanced Amateur Radio Syllabus by adopting the syllabus contained in Sept Harrick. The announcement appeared in the ACMA Amateur Radio Newsletter dated 2nd of March 2022. In news from Region 2, FCC Chair Jessica Rosenworcel has announced plans for the agency to launch a proceeding in April that would explore rules regarding radio receivers, not just transmitters, as is currently done. The proposal for a notice of inquiry is in response to the use of substandard altimeters in US aircraft. Apparently, some altimeter receivers can be affected by other radio signals several hundred megahertz away. Aircraft altimeters use 4.2 to 4.4 gigahertz, while new 5G services use completely different frequencies at 3.7 to 3.98 gigahertz. But aviation interests and the FAA have said aircraft at 50 US airports would be vulnerable to the new 5G communications. And wrapping up this week's international news from Region 3, NZART membership stats. Debbie Zulu Lima 2 Delta Lima, writing in That Society's info line, says, Recently, I've been asked by a number of members just how well NZART membership is faring, so I decided to crunch some numbers from examination results over the last few years. Last year saw a record 118 new amateurs sit and successfully complete the amateur exam, due in no small part to branches holding weekend ham cram courses. Over the past 10 years, NZART examiners have achieved 727 successful passes. While it will take a lot more analysis to confirm how many of those are still members of NZART, I would suggest this is quite a satisfying result. Passing the exam is possibly the easy part for these new amateurs, so how do we retain their interest? A question societies worldwide are tackling. For WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4FUQ. Hello there. The normal stance of amateur radio is that it is apolitical. However, to the RSGB in the UK... It is clear that recent actions by the Russian Federation and their military have crossed the line and the RSGB cannot, in this instance, remain neutral. The policy of the RSGB is that they will follow the actions of the mainstream sporting bodies with regard to all activities of a competitive nature, such as contests and ARDF. Russian and Belarusian radio amateurs are therefore currently ineligible to participate in any event that is organised or sponsored by the RSGB. Now, contest-wise, 2022. March is the John Moyle Memorial Field Day, next weekend, 19th and 20th of March. Harry Angel Memorial, 80-minute sprint, Saturday, 7th of May, 2022. 10 hours UTC to 11.46 UTC. The Don Edwards Memorial Slow Moors Contest, two days, starting May 14, 1800 hours, completing May 15, 1600 hours. Saturday evening, 14 May, between 6pm and 9pm Eastern Standard Time, on 80 metres. Sunday afternoon, 15 May, between 1pm and 4pm Eastern Standard Time, on 40 metres. International CQ Pride Contest, June 4-6. New Worldwide Digital Contest, also June 4-6. VK Shires Contest, 11 June 2022. WIA VHF USF Field Days, Winter 2022. 0200 hours UTC, Saturday 25 June, through 0159 hours UTC, Sunday 26 June. DX Window VK80 LAN, GB80 LAN in the UK, VE80 LAN from Canada, are marking the 80th anniversary of the first operational sortie of the Avro Lancaster. The aircraft was the mainstay of the RAF Bomber Command that was flown by British, Canadian and Australian pilots during World War II. Stations are on the air throughout most of March. France's RAF reports that Special Event Station TM97 Ward will be on the air April 16-25. to 
to celebrate World Amateur Radio Day, which will take place on April 18. As last year, the RAF has planned to celebrate Ward World Amateur Radio Day by activating special call sign TM97 Ward from April 16 to 25, 2022. In the world of DX, there's less than a year to go for the 3Y0J Booby Island expedition, according to an announcement from the team. Operators have confirmed that January 6, 2023 is their scheduled date to leave Cape Town, South Africa, for the destination aboard the vessel SV Arama. The DX expedition is expected to be active for 44 days in all. The operators are building in a contingency week. Booby is the second most wanted DXCC entity. Serial DXA, Nobby, G0VJG, is once again active as 8Q7CQ in the Maldives until next Friday, the 18th of March. This time he is activating the island of Inahura, IOTA AS013. 5UA, Niger. Unusual call sign. Giorgio is in near May. Niger and is active as 5UA99WS until March 20 on 20 metres SSV after 1100 hours Zulu. QSL via EA5GL or LATW. United States Special Event. Members of the Scantron Picano Amateur Radio Club, Spark, K3CSG, will be active as N3T from Steamtown, Scantron, Pennsylvania between May 13 and 15 to celebrate National Train Day, May 14 and National Preservation Month. This is a Parks on the Air park as well, K0864. The K3 CSG operating schedule will be tentatively 1400 hours UTC to 2100 hours UTC each day, depending on park operating hours. Check qrz.com. Beacons. RSGB funding for a 50 MHz beacon. The RSGB reports that it will provide funds towards a 50 MHz beacon designed to study meteor trials above the UK. It will beam vertically up using circular polarisation. The 50 MHz band is well suited for such observations as meteors tend to create strong ionisation trials affecting the 6 metre band. The beacon will be housed at the Sherwood Observatory of the Mansfield in the Southern Astronomical Society. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK for a few q and This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Bruce, VK3 Triple F. And a very good day to you. Worldwide special interest group news and summits on the air. Worldwide flora, fauna program, parks on the air and other adventure groups. Many, many amateurs search for the biggest and best antenna. At their recent field day, however, some hams in New Zealand proved they would go to any lengths, and we do mean any lengths. Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF, writing in Amateur Radio Newsline, tells how. Chris, ZL4RA, led a group on the South Island of New Zealand looking to try something different in the Jock White Memorial Field Day. Chris had scouted out a ZL3 SOTA summit. He, Russ, ZL4JW, and Jim, ZL4JI, had a plan, operating portable with a quarter kilometre long wire. Yes, portable. The antenna was to cross a gully pointing north-northeast to cover New Zealand and perhaps into VK as well. That's three wavelengths on 80 metres and six on 40 metres, or as Chris describes it, ridiculously long. It took some effort to install the 20-foot masts in the wind and rain and to run the wire. One backstake support was a problem due to the strain on it from this length of wire, but it survived. The results? Success, even with just 100 watts maximum power. 
Although the antenna bandwidth was a bit narrow, both transmit and receive signals were strong. Saturday brought some unexpected QRM, but by Sunday the antenna was truly going the distance, and that's the long and short of it. Another antenna that went the distance was right here in VK. The Earth's surface often helps you cover a short distance. Sometimes it's even preferable when you're using one of the lower frequencies. One such antenna recently covered a short distance in just this manner, but it wasn't even transmitting at the time. Compton VK2HRX was operating portable one weekend last month and went to bed in the bush happy with the performance of his linked dipole on 20, 40 and 80 metres. But, as he told fellow hams on the Oz Sota mailing list recently, things didn't quite work out the way it hoped. He said, when I went to use it on Sunday morning, it wasn't there. He discovered that one leg was broken at the 40-80 link and the other leg had simply vanished. Walking farther, Compton spotted the bright yellow antenna wire up on a nearby hill. It was then that he remembered, the previous night, that a mob of 20 or so kangaroos had come bouncing by. He guessed that one of them may have run off with the wire. Likely, he was trying to work, wait for it, skip. Now let's skip across the street and hear, with donut in hand, from Graham, VK3GRK, also with me in sunny Bendigo. Hi, Bendigo Amateur Radio and Electronics Club invites you to their March meeting. The topic will be Mills on the Air Australia, the first five years. The Mills on the Air event is held annually in May and is coordinated by the Denby Dale Radio Society in the UK. It coincides with a national Mills weekend run by the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. Amateur radio operators worldwide help to promote the heritage of Mills and each year Barrick has a working amateur radio station at Anderson's Mill, Smeaton. The presentation will include information about the background to the Mills on the Air weekend, video presentations, radio equipment used and information regarding how to take part in the scheme. The evening starts at 7.30pm, Friday, March 18th, at the first Castlemaine Scout Hall, 16 Recklebourne Street, Castlemaine. A gold coin donation will be appreciated and a light supper will be provided. Thanks, Graham. This presentation will also be streamed on the Barrick YouTube channel. That's Barrick, B-A-R-E-C. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, CW. New Zealand's Papakura Amateur Radio Club hold Morse training broadcasts four nights a week on 3.755 MHz. Certainly worth a listen. Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, 7.30pm, with a Monday time of 7.15pm. Pretty sure David, ZL1DK at nzart.org.nz can answer any questions on how this is working. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, Inc., Aris, USA, is pleased to announce that two crew members scheduled to fly on Axiom Mission 1, AX-1, the first private astronaut mission to the International Space Station, will utilise the Aris onboard radio resources to conduct six school connections via Amateur Radio. These Aris school contacts will be conducted with AX1 crew members Mark Pathy from Canada and Aiton Stibb from Israel. Both are fully trained on the use of the Aris radio system located in the ISS Columbus module. Mark's amateur radio call sign is KO4WFH. Aiton's is 4Z9SPC. AMSAT has just received a generous grant from Amateur Radio Digital Communications for the development of a 3U space frame with deployable solar panels. This standardised 3U CubeSat space frame will serve as the mechanical platform for AMSAT's Golf series of satellites, as well as a new generation of low-Earth orbit FM satellites. The space frame design will be available to the public under an open access agreement. 
Central to the development of the 3U space frame, AMSAT will build three flight-ready space frames for an upcoming series of satellites with potentially enhanced flight control, payload and communication capabilities. Worldwide special interest groups, YOTA, Youth on the Air. Now, a welcome addition to the WIA National News Team, Alec, VK2 APC. Hello everyone. Since this is my first time reading the news, I thought I would introduce myself to you. I earned an amateur operator certificate of proficiency and was issued a foundation license in September last year when I was 11 years old. My experience in the hobby is limited as I am still very new and have a lot to learn. I do like how the hobby provides a good platform for me to learn about science, technology, engineering, and maths known as STEM. I'm a Cub Scout and going into Scouts soon. In Scouts, we have Jamboree on the air known as Joda every October. However, throughout the year, I have STEM activities in Scouts and in school. My radio hobby has given me a good head start in STEM-related activities. You may hear me on the air from time to time participating in the WWFF program as a hunter answering CQ park calls or activating a park with my dad, VK2LP. I'm yet to participate in a contest, however I am looking forward to the three Yoda contests being held this year on the 21st of May, 23rd of July and 30th of December. After listening to the WIA national news and participating in the callbacks since getting my license, I have put my hand up to help read the news. Hopefully this will encourage other youths to get involved in the hobby. For VK1 WIA national news, I am Alec VK2 APC in Sydney. Thanks Alec. We look forward to your reports in weeks to come. Worldwide special interest groups, IOTA, AF004. Andrea, IK1PMR, will be active as EA8 IK1PMR from Tenerife Island, IL18RJ, until March 13th. Activity will be on 80 to 6 metres using CW and SSB. QSL via HB9FKK by the Bureau, direct or IK1PMR by the Bureau. IRCs OK, club log requests OK. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Rescue Radio, IARU Region 1 Emergency Test taps into satellite. In an environment of global challenges, emergency communication becomes even more critical. Jeremy Boot, G4NJH in Amateur Radio Newsline says IARU Region 1 conducted its first test of the newest tool in its emergency communications toolbox on the 26th of February. Stations representing 14 countries around the region included use of the geostationary satellite QO100 as a part of their response to a simulated global emergency. There were 22 stations in all demonstrating how the amateur radio community can be effective, passing messages despite the inevitable language barriers and equipment failures. According to Greg Mossop, G0DUB, the IARU's Emergency Communications Coordinator, the exercise was a success, underscoring how amateur radio stations can respond across a region that stretches from South Africa, north through to Europe and into the United Kingdom. The next test is planned for October. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F in sunny Bendigo. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contact from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions, www.wia.org.au. Now, socially engaging the 2022 social scene. VK4, it's Redfest happening April 9, St Michael's College in Caboolture. Sellers can start filling tables after 7am. The venue for selling will open at 9, although we can gather from 8am onwards for breakfast. VK5, the South Coast Amateur Radio Club's buy and sell, happens April the 24th, that's a Sunday. And also in VK5, Australian Fox Hunting Championship and the Sir Convention, Mount Gambier at the Queen's Birthday Weekend in June. Now till next we meet, I am Graham, VK4 Baker Baker. Walk softly.
from Australia. This has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Get us here, Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel. This has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.